Alright everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in this week. This week I have another gear review for you. I'm actually going to be reviewing my Sibley's Field Guide, um, and we'll jump right in starting now. So, it's a really great field guide. I really like it actually. Um, it's very compact, so you can bring it along on your birding trips. As you see, it's quite small here. Uh, I really like that aspect to it, whereas I do have other field guides, such as the uh, Sibley's Birds Field Guide uh, that covers the whole United States and Canada. Um, this uh, this western one is a little sm smaller, and as you see, this would be a little harder to bring into the field. If you're looking for something a little lighter, Sibley's Western Field Guide would do the job. Um, I also really love the illustrations he's got in here. They're super accurate, um, as well as the illustrations in here, like for this, this one we're looking at Swainson's Hawk. Um, they're super accurate. They have, as well as um, illustrations, they have a range map. They have scientific name, size, weight, and then uh, he writes a little bit about that specific bird, what habitat they're in, um, kind of how they can be found, uh, their predator, uh, whether they're a predator or prey, what food they go after. Um, so there's a really lot of uh, key information in this field guide as well. Um, so don't think, you know, just because you're having a smaller field guide, you're going to lack that information. There's, there's plenty of, of it in this field guide. As well, I really like how it's durable. I do have some tears on the edge here. I generally don't take amazing care of my field guides, to be honest. Um, but you, you can see even with a small tear, it's still uh, it's still being totally fine. Um, they have this kind of protective um, backing to it that can really back up and uh, and make the kind of edges of this book very durable. I, the pages I do not believe are waterproof. Um, so if you're you know, going out in the rain, that might be an issue. Um, I tend to just keep it in my backpack when I'm birding, and then if it's not raining, I can pull it out and identify a bird if I'm not sure what it is. So another thing I really like about this field, guys, is it has a life list in the back. So if you go b before the index, um, it gives a li uh, kind of a checklist of all the birds in this field guide, and I actually use this as my written checklist. Uh, for my life list. So as you can see, I have you know a number of all the different species that I've seen in my life um, checked off here, and this goes for several pages here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, I believe, seven or eight pages here. Um, so it's it's very useful in that way as well. You've got your just general index in here. Um, pretty easy to find birds. Just go under you know whatever that the main name. Let's say I was looking for northern cardinal. Um, I would just go to Cardinal, um, and in this remember in this specific field guide they're not going to have Cardinals in there due to the fact that it's Western, uh, well, Western birds. So I'll use American Robin as my example instead. Let's say I wanted to find American Robin and what page number it was on to see it. I could just go to the the index, find uh, Robin. It's it's listed under the first um, or the main name, and then it, as you see here, it has American or Rufus backed. Uh, which are two types of robins, uh, and American robin is on page 342. And then I would go flip to three, page 342, 240, 247, 288, 342. I just passed it. So there we go, 342, and now I can read about American robin. So that's very helpful as well. The range map is helpful as well because you can see what birds are going to be in your area and if a specific bird's there um, during what time of year. So they have a little key in the back of the field guide, or it might be in the front actually, I think it is in the front. Um, let me get it up, yeah. So it, uh, it shows that um, if, it, if, uh, if you, your area and that bird's range is shown in blue, that means it's there in the winter. Um, if it's in orange, it's there in the summer. If it's there, if it's in purple, it's there year-round, so it's a year-round resident. If it's in yellow, that means it's there during migration, so you can see them in the spring and fall when they're flying north and south. And then a gray is considered rare, so, you know, very low chances of seeing them, still possible. So another thing I like about this, set, this field guide is in the beginning here, it shows um, quite a bit of writing about kind of uh, birding in, in general. So he shows a section on equipment for birding, what he thinks you know, you'd need, um, learning to identify birds, um, physiological effects and mistakes you know, while, while birding, um, variation in appearance, that's a big one, um, 
kind of how a bird looks different times in the year um, or even you know in between moments so if it's raining it's going to maybe fluff out the feathers and if it's dry it might tuck them in so it, it can look differently there um, yeah but he covers uh, quite a few different topics in the beginning ethics finding rare birds uh, before jumping into extinct species sadly you know these are species that are currently considered extinct um, the you know labrador duck eskimo curlew great great auk and others um, here's kind of the bird topography again um, that i was talking about um, he's got kind of body parts of birds in here so parts of a passerine undertail coverts feet head nape bill um, so you can you can look in there to see what you're referencing um, got that with a few different birds very he's uh, i think he's using a chipping sparrow in this uh in this model here um, he he uses a leaf sandpiper as well um, for shorebirds has one on ducks using a gadwall has one on gulls using a california gull that might be a herring though i think it's california um, and then he also has um, kind of life cycles of the birds um, in in the front as well so really helpful to kind of have all that kind of stuff so jumping into the actual species it starts with geese um, you've got you know greater white fronted geese brant um, goes to uh, more more geese snow geese uh, then it jumps to ducks. You cover diving and um, dabbling ducks. Goes into scoters, golden eyes. Um, then you get to your quail section. Um, quail, turkey, pheasant, grouse. Um, then you kind of get into the loons, loons, grebes. Um, and then you get into the uh, albatrosses, petrels, and shearwaters in the section. Um, that's on page 60. And you got, you know, obviously all those species. Then you get into like, petrels and stuff, um, boobies. Uh, cormorants, egrets, um, goss or hawks, and then yeah, quite a few hawks in here, and then getting over here, he jumps right into rails and, and cranes from there, um, gallinules, coots, feralopes, gulls. So yeah, as you see, um, there's there's quite a few species in here. I don't know the exact number actually, but um, more than enough to get you started. Um, I would say this field guide could be used, but for beginners and experts um, it's a it's a, a great field guide because it's simple and it's easy to understand but it also has does that have that detail so um, you can you can really narrow down species very very well so I just wanted to give this quick gear review I hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to drop a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below telling me I look forward to you reading your comments down there have a great week we'll see you next time stay tuned